This is Bouts talking Bouts, and kind of at a loss for words, sort of a rare thing for me. I'm usually pretty talkative, unified <laughs> MMA, 34 Supremacy, great event, Enoch, River Creek Resort, a casino. I mean, got to be starting with the first couple fights of the night, Isaiah Bean versus Harley King. Quick one there, couple minutes there, Anaconda Choke finish, and then we had James Rice, Tyrell Gesselbrecht, another amateur bout, the first being an amateur flyweight, and the next bout, I mean, just another short order kind of affair, an amateur lightweight bout, and that ending less than 20 seconds into the first round. I mean, I was kind of joking earlier on in the card, I was like, we're going to end up, you know, being home by 9 o'clock sort of thing, but some great fights coming after, I mean, Sabath Kuhn taking on Peter Jansen, great amateur bantamweight bout in that third fight there, and some adjustments we saw with Kuhn on the fly seemed to really find his, you know, range and just find, like, a good sense of rhythm, sort of, like, changing his stances and just really getting things going, sort of confusing his opponent on that end of things, and that resulting in a unanimous decision for Sabath. Cool. And in the fourth bout of the evening, Robert Kovacevic taking on Malcolm Tisdale. Quite the amateur welterweight fight there. Another back and forth one. Malcolm with a right hand early. And just really, those guys exchange it with flurries all throughout. Seemed like there were moments where Robert was, you know, getting a rhythm going. And again, certain things happening on his end, but clearly fight being in the favor of Tisdale all throughout, despite a spirited effort by his opponent. And that resulting in a unanimous decision for Malcolm Tisdale. In the fifth bout of the evening, Matt Clute and Marcus Cromwell. Another tightly contested affair, 150-pound catch weight. It was an amateur bout. And, I mean, just such a back-and-forth affair. You really could make a case for either guy having a solid shot in that tilt there. And just ending up with the decision going towards Matt Clute. Great, great tilt. Awesome fight between those two. A split decision affair yet again. Sixth bout of the evening, Cam McDonald in a 165-pound pro catchweight taking taking on Nick Harabek. That was a great fight, sort of, you know, commensurate kind of like placement in the game. And as far as, you know, Cam McDonald, that sort of star on the rise. And then we had Nick Harabek, who, you know, a little more bit of a tenured kind of competitor. So crossroads fight for both and a three minutes, seven seconds victory in the second frame. And a victory for Nick in that affair. Getting into the seventh bout of the evening, it was Colton Menzak taking on Neil Anderson. It was in a lightweight bout, and quite the back and forth affair. Colton Menzak certainly showing a spirited effort all throughout. Colton, you know, showing his hands, starting to mark up Neil's face a little bit. Ultimately, though, there would be a heavy, heavy focus on just the hands with uh, some of the competitors. You know, Neil Anderson getting that unanimous decision victory, and Pat Pillig by. Byron Phillips, welterweight title. That was the co-main event affair. And one of those situations where it was just such an amazing fight. So many different elements of the MMA game. We saw folk style. We got to see some of the freestyle wrestling. We got to see, you know, striking in that sort of like mid-range. Just getting out there in the middle of the cage and slanging them things. And it seemed like the last round kind of inexplicably broke down into just the guys deciding, hey, let's have a gunfight and sort of see what happens. And the victory from that bout going to Pat Pillick. We've seen a lot of people following Pat Pillick through. He's got a big shiny gold belt. He's got a you know big smile across his face too. Just you know really really appreciative of all of the attention he's getting, all of the acclaim, and just what a finish. 14 seconds, a TKO finish in that last round there, and the new unified MMA welterweight champion is Pat Pillick. And it was kind of like a knock on wood sort of thing. I think I was kind of bantering with Matt Marconi. I was like, the main event might even be better, though. Bit of a bold claim. Sort of ended up being the case. I mean, it was one of those fights where if you, like, presented it as a screenplay for a Rocky movie, the person would be like, that's just not realistic. That's not going to happen. There's not going to be multiple knockdowns whereby, you know, Seth gets up. There's not going to be, you know, both guys bleeding. There's not going to be that intense fatigue, just the two guys digging down deep. A admirable effort. I'm truly in awe of what was taking place there. Just an amazing main event fight. Both men's stock raised up that much higher. And I mean, you even saw it in the finish a little bit too, just with the whole last minute kind of nature of it. And not even last minute. Fight finishing with literally two seconds remaining. Two seconds were left in the fight and two titles under the unified MMA banner for Teddy Ash. It is very poetic. Champ, champ, Teddy Ash representing Shaved Bears, and is the light heavyweight and middleweight champion of Unified MMA, and very likely, I mean, you'd have to imagine at least, going to be getting considered for a UFC call-up. 
Just an amazing event overall. River Cree Resort and Casino. Happy that Unified MMA put on such a great event at such a great venue. And very happy Liberty Multimedia was able to come on out. This is Dylan Bowker with Bowks Talking Bouts.